In this video we're going to define the notion of an absolute value in an ordered field and then we'll prove some results about absolute values. So if x is an element of an ordered field f then we define the absolute value of x as x if x is greater than 0, 0 if x is equal to 0, and the additive inverse of x if x is less than 0. So you often see the notation um, with a plus sign and a minus sign written under it. Um, that notation is often used to mean plus or minus. So in this context, for example, um, you might say that the absolute value of x is equal to plus or minus x. So that's true in the sense that absolute value of x is either equal to x if x is positive or is equal to minus x if x is negative. Of course, plus minus x wouldn't do as a definition because it's ambiguous. But it is notation that's useful, and we'll see it in the proofs that follow. Of course, we could also say that x itself is equal to plus or minus absolute value of x. Uh, it works both ways in this case. Uh, so be on the lookout for that in the proof of the theorem that we're going to sh demonstrate next. So here's the theorem we want to prove. It consists of uh, five parts. So let's let f be an ordered field. And let's suppose that a is an element of the ordered field f then the absolute value of a is greater than or equal to zero. It's the first thing we'll prove. Next we'll prove that a is bounded between minus absolute value of a and absolute value of a. Uh, then we'll prove uh, something that's often used in algebra, in college algebra for example, the fact about absolute values that if you have um, r in f with r greater than or equal to zero and x is a variable in f, then the absolute value of x minus a is less than or equal to r if and only if a minus r is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to a plus r. So that fact is commonly used to um, solve equations or solve find a solution set of inequalities involving absolute values. 4 is the same as 3 but with uh, strict inequalities. I will state it separately because um, it'll be the same proof but with strict inequalities and it's a case that's used a lot. Uh, 5 says that if you have a and b elements of the field f, then the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. Okay, so that's the theorem we're going to prove, so let's get started. So we'll take each uh, part of the theorem as a lemma and prove it separately. So let's let f be an ordered field. This is the first part. If a is an element of f, then the absolute value of a is greater than or equal to 0. So we'll start by supposing that f is an ordered field and that a is an element of the ordered field f. This result follows directly from the definition of the absolute value and trichotomy. So by trichotomy, you know that a is less than 0, is equal to 0, or is greater than 0. And then we'll just take each case separately and show that in all three cases, the absolute value of a is greater than or equal to 0. So if a is less than 0, then we define the absolute value of a to be the additive inverse of a. And if a is less than 0, then the additive inverse of a is greater than 0. You can convince yourself of that by adding the additive inverse of a to both sides of the inequality a less than 0. So in that case, if a is less than 0, absolute value of a is greater than 0. Of course, if a is equal to 0, then the absolute value of a is equal to 0 by our definition. And finally, if a is positive, if a is greater than 0, absolute value of a is just defined to be a itself, and by supposition that's greater than 0. So in all three possible cases given by trichotomy, the absolute value of a is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So the second thing we want to prove is that if f is an ordered field and a is an element of f, then a is bounded between negative or minus absolute value of a and positive absolute value of a. So let's suppose f is an ordered field and let's suppose that a is an element of f. Okay, by the previous part we know that the absolute value of a is greater than or equal to zero and we can multiply that inequality by negative one and uh, then we get negative a, negative absolute value of a or minus absolute value of a is less than or equal to zero. So zero can be found between minus absolute value of a and absolute value of a. All right. 
Now the part of that inequality that's important to us is that minus absolute value of a is less than or equal to absolute value of a. See, because a is either equal to absolute value of a or is equal to minus absolute value of a. Okay? In other words, a is equal to plus or minus absolute value of a. So um, we can just stick that in the inequality there, and then in either case, that inequality is true. So if a is equal to absolute value of a, then the inequality on the right side of that statement is an equal sign, and the inequality is true. If a is equal to minus absolute value of a, then the inequality on the left side of that last statement is an equal sign, and the whole inequality is again true. Okay, so minus absolute value of a is less than or equal to a, which is less than or equal to absolute value of a. So the third thing we're going to prove, this is going to be the longest proof of the set. Uh, if f is an ordered field, a are elements of f, and r is greater than or equal to zero. If we consider x as a variable in the field f, then the absolute value of x minus a is less than or equal to r if and only if a minus r is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to a plus r. So this is an if and only if statement, so we have to prove both directions. So we'll do the proof in two steps. Step one will be one direction, step two will be the other direction. For both steps, let's let f be an ordered field, and let's suppose a and r are elements of f with r greater than or equal to zero, and let's consider x as a variable with values in f. So we'll make those two, those, all those assumptions for both parts of the proof. So in step one, we're going to prove that if the absolute value of x minus a is less than or equal to r, then x is bounded between a minus r and a plus r. In other words, a minus r is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to a plus r. So suppose that absolute value of x minus a is less than or equal to r. Then we can multiply that inequality by minus 1, and we get that minus r is less than or equal to minus absolute value of x minus a. By the previous part, we know that for any thing in the field, it's the value of the thing in the field. So if we have something in a field, it's between its minus absolute value and its positive absolute value. So in particular, x minus a is between minus absolute value of x minus a and positive x absolute value of x minus a. Okay, so in other words, minus absolute value of x minus a is less than or equal to x minus a, which is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus a. So we can string all those inequalities together, and we get minus r is less than or equal to minus absolute value of x minus a which is less than or equal to x minus a, which is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus a, which is less than or equal to r. Okay, And we only care about part of that inequality. So in particular, we know that minus r is less than or equal to x minus a, and that's less than or equal to r. And then we just add a throughout that inequality, and we get that a minus r is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to a plus r. So that finishes step one of the proof. So for step two of the proof, we're going to prove that if a minus r is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to a plus r, then the absolute value of x minus a is less than or equal to r. So let's suppose that a minus r is less than or equal to x, and that's less than or equal to a plus r then we'll add the additive inverse of a throughout the inequality. And we get that minus r is less than or equal to x minus a, which is less than or equal to r. Then we can multiply that inequality by minus 1 and reverse the signs to give us that r is greater than or equal to minus x minus a, which is greater than or equal to minus r. And of course we can rewrite that in with less thans, and we get minus r is less than or equal to minus quantity x minus a, which is less than or equal to r. Okay, but now recall that absolute value of x minus a is equal to positive or negative x minus a, and both of those are bounded between minus r and r. 
So we can conclude then that absolute value of x minus a must be less than or equal to r. So that concludes the proof of part th three of the theorem. Um, part four is the same statement as part three, but with uh, l strict less than instead of less than or equal to signs. And the proof here is the same as the proof of the previous result, uh, but using strict inequalities. So it's a good exercise to try to work through that and write that out. Finally, let's prove the last part of the theorem. If f is an ordered field, and a and b are elements of the field f, then the absolute value of a times b is the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. So let's let f be an ordered field, and let's suppose a and b are elements of the field f. Then we know the absolute value of a is plus or minus a, and the absolute value of b is plus or minus b. So absolute value of a times absolute value of b is going to be plus or minus a times b. Okay, but we know that a times b is plus or minus absolute value of a b. So we could say that the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b is either plus or minus absolute value of a b. But we know something more. We know that the absolute value of a times b has to be greater than or equal to zero, and the absolute value of the product a b has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that means that we have to have that absolute value of a times absolute value of b. It couldn't be minus absolute value of a b. It has to be absolute value of a b. And that concludes the proof of this theorem. Thanks for listening.